Okay, well that's just not alright. So it seems like you guys really like the video essays, huh? So allow me to take you all on yet another documentary tale of one of my personal favorite games, start to finish. Our journey begins on the character creation menu, where I click randomize until fate deals me my hand. My hand came to me in the form of a frail old man whom I named Agu. My OBS then stopped recording for whatever reason, so you didn't get to see me make the outline of my house. But here it is. Along with the very first room for our very first NPC. We go ahead and make a chest room and place down a living loom I found and then make a furnace. I also found this funny umbrella that I can use as a weapon. After a continuous brush with death, I figure it's best if for the first night we just sit back and build up the house, making more rooms for more NPCs in the future. With the night passed, we set off to explore the world, mine ores, and loot anything we can from nearby chests. Among this loot, we find recall potions, which will allow us to instantly teleport back to the house, making exploration a lot faster going forward. We also find some Hermes boots, our very first accessory, which lets us run real fast. I then travel off to the right of the world and discover the Corruption, one of two evil biomes that can spawn when creating your world, the other one being the Crimson. This new horrifying land is filled with indescribable amalgamations of creatures and stone and ore that is unbreakable to us at this point in the game. Luckily, I was able to use a few bombs I had to grab a couple pieces of this mysterious corruption ore. And while trying to make my way down to one of the mysterious glowy orbs, I accidentally blew myself up. Oh, I miss. With death around every corner, it was clear that I needed to use the vast power of Google.com to discover the optimal class setups for each stage of the game. I found a spear to replace my umbrella, and then I found the best accessory in the game, the Steppin' Stool. <laughs> oh yeah, and then this happened to me, which you saw in the intro. Now unfortunately for us, the Terraria 1.4 update came with the addition of NPC happiness which scales with the NPC shop prices. What this means is that we'll get better prices from NPCs that have purchasable items in the future if we make multiple houses in each particular biome. So with this, I set off to the desert to start procuring our second NPC house. With the outline of the desert house done, I commence construction on the very first boss arena. Now for anyone unfamiliar with Terraria, the very first boss is actually the most terrifying one. A being of immense power and girth. A creature indescribable to the human mind. Torch God. So to prepare for Torch God, I did a bit more mining and a bit more exploring. I also found a cloud in a bottle, a new accessory which will let me double jump, that's pretty cool. And I foolishly decided to take him on right away. But through sheer stubbornness, stubbornness? But through sheer stubbornness, after a few attempts, I do manage to beat the Torch God, awarding me the Torch God's fervor. Now, what is the Torch God's fervor? Well, it's a permanent effect that changes the torches based on the biome that you're in. Why is this important? Well, you see, back during the original 1.4 update, they added something called Torch Luck. What this meant is that if you used a torch specific to the biome that you were in, your luck on things like drops and such would go up. The bad thing about this is that they added reverse torch luck, meaning that if you used a torch outside of its specified biome, your luck would go down. Now of course after many people went baby about this, they did remove that but kept the good torch luck. So that still makes this a very good thing to get early on so that we get good luck going forward in any other biome. It also means I can now finish my desert house. So with that I go ahead and finish the house and then start construction on the actual boss arena for bosses that aren't torch themed. The first one on our list being the Eye of Cthulhu. I then went ahead and decided to use the hole I used to go down to make the Torch God Arena to start the elevator, which is basically just a straight line all the way down to the underworld for us to fall down. It'll be important later. While doing this, I also found some funny little climbing claws to let me slide down and climb up walls. While doing this, I also came across a couple more deposits of that demonite ore and took it with the bombs in hopes that maybe I can make something cool later on. While underground, we also come across little glowing hearts that when consumed increase our maximum health all the way up to 200. I went ahead and decided to use some of the amethysts I found to construct our very first grappling hook and use the bunch of the gold that I had in surplus to make some armor. And after a long trek involving many deaths, I finally come to the underworld. And while there's not much we can do here now, it will be nice to have this shortcut down here in the future. After swiftly leaving the underworld, I realized that I actually got enough demonite ore on this trek to actually make something. I of course go with what is effectively the best weapon in the entire game, the yo-yo. 
I went ahead and decided to turn the Torch God Arena into our third NPC house in the underground, as well as I went ahead and finished off my golden armor. Now the nice thing about Terraria is that when you have a full set of the same armor, you get a set bonus. This early on though, the set bonus is something very simple, like an extra three defense. I also decided to make some stone slab walls and put them in the main house so that it wouldn't look so ugly in comparison to the other two. We go back to exploring the underground, and to my surprise, we receive a message that a goblin army is approaching. So I teleport back to the house to deal with it, and I realize after dying several times that we are severely unprepared for these type of events. So I head underground to grab some lava and create a sort of cone-shaped funnel with stairs for the next time this happens. Now the next time something like this happens, all we gotta do is go into this little compartment under it that I made, and the enemy should walk up the stairs into the funnel and fall into the lava and die. Also while exploring, I managed to come across a beast statue, which from my understanding I thought was a pretty rare item. This will actually be pretty useful later on to put into the boss arena, as it permanently raises our defense by five as long as we're anywhere near it. While doing even more exploring, I also finally came across enough life crystals to finally get to the maximum 400 health. I also put together some gravity potions, which when drunk give you the ability to invert gravity. What this does is give us the opportunity to explore the few sky islands in the world, which each hold various unique items. One of these that I came across was the new melee weapon I will be using, the Star Fury. A nice little pink sword that has a star shoot out of the sky when you swing it. We also take this opportunity to go to the very edge of the world and begin construction on another one of our NPC houses, this one being a nice little scenic beachside getaway. It would also seem that while exploring the Sky Islands, I accidentally put some torches inside of the buildings, so uh, now Luigi the Painter is kind of stuck up there. Oops. And with that, the game finally starts to ramp up a little bit as I get another mysteriously threatening message. I go back up to the surface and prepare myself as now it is time to fight the Eye of Cthulhu. Now would probably be a good time to mention that Terraria Expert Mode not only affects drops and difficulty, but also boss AI. But to my surprise, I actually managed to beat the eye first try. And so we are rewarded a bit more demonite ore along with one of my very favorite accessories in the entire game, the Shield of Cthulhu. The reason for it being my favorite is that it gives you the ability to dash, which you will find is incredibly useful. I also get another band of regeneration to add to my collection. Uh, did I talk about the piggy bank? It's basically an ender chest where you can keep your money safe. With the Eye of Cthulhu defeated, I foolishly run right over to the Corruption to create a new mini-arena for the next boss, the Eater of Worlds. I of course get put in my place rather quickly by him, however, the Eater of Worlds is a giant worm that you can break in half creating more worms. What this means is that he's created in segments that each have individual health bars. When destroyed, each segment has drops. And before dying to him, I managed to destroy just enough segments for him to drop a couple shadow scales. Just enough scales for me to create a demonite pickaxe. With this, I can gather a bit of resources to give me the edge I need to beat him. So I pour some water down the hell hole so that it'll go into some lava, creating obsidian. We go down to the underworld and very carefully gather some hellstone through walls as lava comes out of it when you break it. And then we also steal a hell forge to replace our furnace. I also stole a clock while I was down there. While gathering a bit more obsidian, I come across a mysterious bound goblin, who I quickly buy a tinkerer's workbench and rocket boots from before he jumps in some lava and burns to death. Now this is big, as the Tinker's Workbench is a crafting station that allows you to combine accessories. For example, I can take the rocket boots that I just bought from him and my Hermes boots that let me run fast to combine them and create Spectre boots. This means that I can basically equip two accessories while only taking up one slot. I make some obsidian skin potions to make me resistant to lava so I can go mine a bunch of hellstone a lot easier. And I gather us enough to make a whole set of molten armor, a little imp staff which lets me have a little imp next to me that'll fly and shoot guys for me, a molten pickaxe and a molten ham axe, and the volcano, a gigantic flaming sword. With now being a little bit ahead in equipment, I decide to backtrack a little bit and fight the actual first boss, the King Slime, to get that over with. I then head over to the jungle to get that NPC house built, as well as to take the time while I'm there to explore the underground jungle. Here I managed to come across a magic mirror, which basically functions as an infinite recall potion. We also come across a beehive, which is also for another boss that I'll probably fight later than I should. As well as while I'm all the way over here, go to the other end of the world. In an underwater chest, I find a little fish pet, which I think is an unfortunate reference to a certain song. On my way back, some NPCs moved into the jungle house, allowing us to start our pylon network. This is the one nice part about making multiple houses, as you're able to buy these things called pylons. They allow you to put one at each individual NPC house you make and then teleport them between them at will. 
With this in mind, I also go ahead and get the Snow Biome NPC house off the list. While going back towards the left of the world, I discover the location of the dungeon. This will also be important in a bit for another boss. I finish up the beachside house, and with a nice pylon network now set up allowing us to teleport around the world, I go ahead and start construction of the dungeon arena. But with this newfound equipment I have, before I finish anything else, I have a bone to pick with a certain giant worm. And after a now much easier battle, I get rewarded with the Worm Scarf, a nice accessory that reduces all damage by 17%. I decide to go do some more searching in the underground jungle for an aglet of wind because I want to upgrade my Spectre Boots into Lightning Boots. After a lengthy search in this world and a separate one I made in case I need anything from the Crimson Biome in the future, I finally found what was necessary to make the Lightning Boots. As well as I also came across some Spike Shoes, which when combined with the Spike Claws make Tiger Gear. I don't plan on wearing it, but I don't know, it looks cool. I also found some Feral Claws, which give me a 12% increased melee speed. The guide then tells me I need Ice Skates to upgrade my Lightning Boots further, so I'm off to the Ice Biome to find them. To my surprise, I actually found them quite fast. Later, while being confused on why the Goblin won't sell me a Snow Pylon, I see a mysterious thing happen in the background. Turns out it wasn't just a background visual, as a meteorite lands. I go to the landing site and yoink all that sweet meteorite for our taking. So with nothing else to do, I decide to challenge the next boss back at the dungeon where I conveniently made that arena earlier, Skeletron. After a pretty lengthy fight where I thought I had it in the bag, he does manage to get it. So after a bit more exploring where more stuff like this happened, I go ahead and challenge him again. But here is where the Shield of Cthulhu, the item that I love so much, actually hindered me. As while trying to dash, I bounced off his hand right inside of his spinning head, which does the most damage. So, after even more exploring, I do come across a skeleton merchant underground who sells me a nice upgrade to the yo-yo, the counterweight. And so, here we go again with another try. And he still got me. But don't worry, because this time, I have an idea. It's called Build a House Next to the Dungeon with the nurse inside of it so that I can heal to full health whenever I want. It's simple, but effective. So with a free infinite health exploit right next to the boss arena I made, I easily beat Skeletron. I should just do this for every boss fight, huh? And while beating Skeletron doesn't offer much in terms of rewards from the boss himself, it does make the dungeon free for exploration, as if you try to enter the dungeon before beating Skeletron, this is what happens. And so into the dungeon we go, where we come across skeletons, a tied up mechanic, a pet slime that says glug glug, and a bunch of locked gold chests filled with accessories that'll be very useful going forward. While doing all this, a party girl NPC also moves in, who proves to be the most useful NPC by selling me a bouncy beach ball. Yeah. One of the accessories I got in the dungeon was a Cobalt Shield, which when combined with an Obsidian Skull will make me an Obsidian Cobalt Shield, which will make me resistant to all fire blocks and knockback. It'll also mark the beginning of my journey for one of the worst grinds in the entirety of the game, getting the Ankh Charm. I also managed to grab a Shadow Key from some of the gold chests in the dungeon, so I head on down to the Underworld to open some of the Shadow Chests down there. Unfortunately, there wasn't anything of much use down there, so I head back to the dungeon in hopes of finding a Murasama. A very nice blue sword, because I guess at this point I'm going melee. It's I've been using melee weapons this whole time, so yeah. And I actually found the sword in the very first chest that I looked in, so I'll let past me say the next line in the script. Alright. <laughs> That was easy. With the Murasama required, I head back home and make a blade of grass using some of the stuff I got from the underground jungle. I grab some Demonite ore and make a Light's Bane, and taking these three new swords and combining them with the Volcano Sword, I'm able to make the Knight's Edge. I then decide to waste all that meteorite that I got earlier to make some fancy walls for my chest room. From here, I set off to one of the ends of the world to go fishing in hopes of finding some water walking boots. And with most of the pre-hard mode bosses defeated, I decide to make some fireproof platforms and go down to the underworld to start construction of the Hell Bridge. But of course, with many fishing breaks in between, where I also finally got rid of this dumb shark for a flying salmon. But he was short-lived, as I then found what would probably become my permanent pet for the rest of the game, a Tabuscus reference. And so, I think it was finally time to fight the last pre-hard mode boss. So I go down to the underworld and hunt for a demon carrying a guide voodoo doll. Throw it in the lava, killing the guide, and spawning the wall of flesh. And to be honest, I thought I had it in the bag first try, but then this happened. Oh, I missed that. So after grinding for some more accessories and bringing along some potions with me this time, I do manage to beat the Wall of Flesh. This puts the world into hard mode. 
where just when you thought you were beginning to feel overpowered, you get struck all the way back to level 1, getting one-shot by everything again. For being the Wall of Flesh, I'm awarded a Summoner's Weapon and Accessory for some reason, but I'm also given a Demon Heart, which gives us a permanent extra accessory slot. It also gives us the Pwn Hammer, which I take over to the Corruption and break three Demon Altars to spawn Cobalt, Mithril, and Titanium in my world. During this, it also seems like our Desert House became completely corrupted, so that's fun. So I mine myself through the ranks, getting enough cobalt to make a cobalt drill, to mine enough mithril to make a mithril drill to be able to mine titanium. And after mining a lot of titanium, I also find a tied up wizard underground, so there's another NPC. After a long time, I finally gather enough titanium to make a full set of armor and a new drill. As I finish all that up, a pirate invasion happens, and this is where the AFK arena I made way earlier comes in real handy, as I basically just sit in here and farm free money, and whenever the bosses show up, I jump out, fight them real quick, then hop back in. From here, the next step is to go up and fight a bunch of wyverns to get some souls of flight. I then go to one of the new biomes created in hard mode, the Hallow, and go underground to try and farm some souls of light. While doing this, I also come across one of the 10 low drop chance items that will be needed to make the Ankh Charm. I also figure one of the simplest ways to do this for the Ankh Charm will be to keep a checklist. Let me just put to the... Eh, there we go. With souls of light appearing to be so scarce, I go to the underground corruption and try and get some souls of night. And I do get enough to make some demon wings. So with those, I idiotically decide to challenge one of the first hard mode bosses, Skeletron Prime. He, of course, puts me in the ground quite fast. So, back to grinding. While exploring underground, I do manage to find some armor polish, so let's uh, just bring up the checklist and it... Eh. I go to the underground hallow and start construction of a new AFK area that will become very important later. And while doing this, a blood moon happens way too late, as this was supposed to happen far before hard mode. So I go and I sit in the AFK arena for a little bit, farming up stuff. I then use some of the souls of light I've gotten to make a key of light. Put the key of light in a chest to summon a mini boss, the hallowed mimic. And I actually got the item I wanted first try, the Daedalus Stormbow. With this, I go up the little sky rope I made earlier and construct a very small but useful arena to fight the destroyer. This small arena with the Stormbow basically makes this fight a cakewalk, as you just sit up here and rain arrows down through the platforms. With one of the mechanical bosses defeated, this opens the room up for the Steampunker NPC to move in, who I can buy the Clementator from for a hefty two platinum. But it's a worthwhile purchase, as what this'll do is allow me to stop all that nasty spreading corruption from destroying my desert house. From here, I decide to fight the Wall of Flesh two more times in an attempt to get a Warrior's Emblem. Instead, he drops a Sorcerer Emblem and a Ranger Emblem. Combine this with the Summoner's one I got the first time I defeated him, and I have an Emblem for every single class except for the one I need. Unfortunately, even with the new Light Disc weapon I got from defeating the Destroyer, it seems like losing to Skeletron Prime was still just a skill issue, as you can tell by my reaction here. Okay. Stupid. Who made this game? After trying again again and losing again, you know what they say, fourth time is the... Time, so I beat him. So last on the list of the mechanical bosses was the twins, who I fought in the tiny sky bridge I made next to the destroyer arena, and it went about as expected. But I have an idea, so I head over to the ocean to make a small area where I can farm up some sharks for some shark fins. With these, I can make a minigun called the Mega Shark. I scrounge up some cursed bullets and make the sky bridge a little bit longer to basically turn the whole boss fight into a running gun. In between this and fighting the twins, I also decided to knock the Queen Bee off the list of bosses defeat since I kind of skipped her earlier. Not much to say considering it was a breeze with the stuff I had this late in the game. But while being in the underground jungle, I'm reminded of the existence of life fruit, another consumable you can find all throughout the underground jungle that permanently increases your health even further. Something I realized I probably should have done as soon as it was available. So now begins my hunt for life fruit instead. While exploring the jungle for life fruit, I also come across this mysterious new area with a pool of liquid called Shimmer. This stuff allows you to throw stuff like accessories into it, and it'll completely change it into brand new stuff. It also causes this to happen. Oh, no! Oh! Oh, where am I No, my lava charm! Yeah, where am I going? No! What the- No! <laughs> After working on the new AFK farm for a little bit and trying to fix the desert house being corrupted again, I go ahead and take on the twins. And I die again. And while working on the AFK arena a bit more, our very first solar eclipse happens. So back to sitting in the AFK farm for another hour. This is an event that at the moment is only useful mainly for money, but it will be useful later on. I did get a fast clock from it, and at some point I must have gotten a bandage and also a blindfold, so let's just not call three of those off the checklist. I then went to farm Medusa to try and get the pocket mirror, and despite getting three heads which have a lower drop chance, still no mirror. And with how bad my luck is at the moment, I figure it's as good a time as any to fight the twins.
With all three mechanical bosses finally defeated, I can make a nice minecart, replace my titanium drill with a Drax, and make an Avenger emblem, which I can turn into a mechanical glove, which I can turn into a fire gauntlet. So I make some Splunker potions, and I'm off to the underground jungle again to gather the next major ore in the game. So I ground up enough in the new ore in the jungle, chlorophyte to make some armor, so now I'm a green viking with a crystal leaf above my head that shoots enemies for me. As for weapons, with all the stuff I got from the mechanical bosses, I can make an Excalibur and then turn it into a true Excalibur. I also figure it would now be a good idea to try and get the truffle in PC. To do this, you have to make a house in a mushroom biome, so I go to the underground one, grab a bunch of mushrooms, and make an artificial one up next to my sky rope. I make a nice house out of mushroom stuff to make it look nice and pretty, and then I just make a bunch of mud, put some mushroom seeds in it, and we'll know it's fully grown when we see the truffles moved in. And I should really fix this awful NPC setup that I have going on, but I just can't be bothered. But I head on over to the jungle again and head underground to make yet another arena for our next boss, Plantera. While making the arena, I also killed enough turtles to get three shells to make turtle armor, which will reflect a percentage of the damage I take back at the attacker. I also went back to the shimmer pool and threw some extra armor polish in so that I can get some vitamins. We can check that off the list now, too. I also managed to get a trifold map while killing some things underground. I then went over to the dungeon to try and get two Nazars, one to keep and one to throw back into the shimmer to make a megaphone. And with that, I finally have everything needed to make the Ankh charm. Okay, here we go. I combine the blindfold and the mirror to make the reflective shades, the Nazar and the microphone to make the counter curse mantra, the trifold map with the fast clock to make the plan, the bezier and the bandage to make the mendicated advantage, and the armor polish and the vitamins to make the armor brace, and combine all of these to finally make the Ankh charm. I then combine that with my shield to make the Ankh shield, and I am now resistant to almost every debuff. I killed Skeletron again to get enough souls to make a true knight's edge, and then I head on over to the underground jungle to fight Plantera. And while I dispatched the first phase of the boss pretty easily, the second phase is where she goes crazy. I made the arena pretty big and even set up two teleporters on either side so that I could zip away from her whenever she got too close. However, it seems like this was still not enough to beat her. So I figured the answer was just more teleporters. So I try and go set up two more, but honestly, setting up the teleporters is even more frustrating than fighting Plantera, because I'm just sitting here trying to build and there's a million enemies constantly hitting me. But I get it done and I go find another bulb so I can take another crack at Plantera. With Plantera defeated, screams are heard from the dungeon apparently, but a solar eclipse happens as soon as I get back home. This gives me the opportunity to fight a new miniboss that appears during the solar eclipse, Mothron. I kill Mothron until I get a broken hero sword, which allows me to combine the true Excalibur and the true Knight's Edge to create the Terra Blade. I also used another broken hero sword to make the best item in the game, the Terra Toilet, my throne. So with Plantera defeated, I can finally go to the underground jungle and find and enter the jungle temple. I make my way through the temple, disabling all the traps and lizard people I come across until I make it to the final room, where I decide to spawn and take a crack at the next boss with my new Terra Blade, the Golem. And I suspect that you know the pattern by now. <sighs> I of course tried again and failed again, so now is where the real grinding commences. I head over to that Crimson World I made way back when and grab a bunch of the blocks in the Crimson Biome. Now remember that other AFK arena I've been working on for a while? Well with this stuff I can turn the entire thing into an artificial Crimson Biome. While working on this, the Truffle also showed up, and it turns out that I didn't really need him at all because the Drax is just as good as the equipment I wanted him for, so that was a nice use of my time. So I go back to sitting in the AFK farm with the goal of getting a Crimson Key, one of the six biome keys that opens a special chest in the dungeon that has a 0.04% chance of dropping from any enemy killed in the biome. And after sitting in there for several hours, I just gave up and went back to challenging the golem over and over again until I won. Defeating the golem drops the Picksaw, a new pickaxe that can mine the altar that spawns him that we can bring back home so that if we want to fight him again we can do it on our turf now. This also supplies us with some beetle shells which we can combine with our turtle armor to make beetle armor. I then head over to the dungeon and find a mysterious gathering of religious zealots. I of course kill them without hesitation, accidentally spawning the next boss in the game, the lunatic cultist. Once again it goes as expected. So I head on over to the jungle temple and yoink some of their traps to upgrade the AFK farm, and after a full day of farming, finally, 
a crimson key. So I figured before using the key, since I'm already here, I might as well spend the time farming for the other item I made this farm for, the Rod of Discord. So I turned the AFK area into an underground hallow biome so that Chaos Elementals can spawn. The Rod of Discord has a 0.25% chance of dropping from Chaos Elementals, but Chaos Elementals only spawn if your character is actively moving. So with my massive monkey brain, I make a macro to make it so my character continuously jumps, and then I just go AFK and come back later and see that I finally got one. Now the Rod of Discord allows you to teleport to wherever your cursor is, but whenever you teleport you get a 6 second debuff called the Chaos State, where if you teleport again you take damage. So it's basically a free teleport every 6 seconds. But this is an item that will become detrimental in fighting the final boss in the game. I also think that I finally, near the end of the game, found a replacement for the Shield of Cthulhu. I found a new enemy that started to appear in the dungeon called a Bone Lee, and he dropped a tabby and a black belt. If I combine these two items with the climbing gear I made way back at the start of the video, I can get Master Ninja gear. Not only is this an improvement on the dash as it doesn't bounce off of enemies, but it also gives me a 10% chance to dodge any attack. I then made a horrific realization about the Crimson Key. See, I got the Crimson Key in this world using an artificial Crimson Biome because this is a corruption world. However, what this means is that there's no crimson chest inside of the dungeon. So I think, okay, I'll just hop over to the crimson world and get the chest there. Unfortunately, upon arrival, it seems that biome keys in that world are cursed by a powerful jungle creature, that being Plantera. Alright, so ready? I dig down to the underworld and search for a voodoo demon. I throw the voodoo doll into the lava to spawn the wall of flesh, I kill the wall of flesh, put in the world into hard mode. I then have to find each mechanical boss without an arena, head over to the underground jungle, kill Plantera without an arena, and then defeat Skeletron to open up the entrance to the dungeon, and then there. Now I can open the crimson chest. This awards me with the Vampire Knives, a weapon that shoots a bunch of daggers in a cone direction in front of you and also heals you for a percentage of the damage you deal to the enemy. With these required, my next goal is to make a sky rope one of the edges of the world in hopes of finding a Martian Saucer. Hit the Martian Saucer, but don't kill it and let it fly off, and this starts the Martian Invasion. This event can spawn a UFO miniboss, whom I'm hoping drops a very specific item for me. Unfortunately, not only did I have to restart the invasion several times, but I had to fight the UFO many, 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 many times before I finally got the item I wanted, the Cosmic Car Key. What this does is give us our own little UFO mount that lets us fly pretty much infinitely. So with now infinite healing and flight by my side, I figure it's finally time to pick a proper fight with the Lunatic Cultist. The problem with this fight is that it kind of dragged on for too long, reason being that the Lunatic Cultist has 48,000 health and I refuse to die with my new vampire knives healing me continuously, so it kind of turned into a 12 minute long stalemate with both of us just refusing to die. However, after a while I did of course beat him, but then I'm giving the message that celestial creatures are invaded. Defeating the Cultist also awarded me with a new crafting station called the Ancient Manipulator, so I just put that right here. Opening up the map, we can see these celestial creatures we were told about. Four gigantic pillars, each with a unique army of enemies protecting them. The only real question is where to start, but I have a specific target in mind. So after finding a way to cheese the solar pillar by hiding in a hole in the ground, I'm awarded a plethora of solar fragments. With these, I can create my next melee weapon, the Solar Eruption. And see, this is why I picked the solar pillar first. Each pillar is tailored to one of the four classes in the game. I of course did my best to cheese the other three pillars, and while the magic and ranger pillars aren't of much use for me, the summoner one does give me a new guy to replace my little imp. So after defeating the final pillar, I'm informed that apparently impending doom approaches. I'm sure it's fine, so I head on back to... Screen got a little fuzzy there. But anyway, I go and head like trying to see there. Okay, well I made this cool lunar hook that has like four hooks that depend on the What the alright, I there's something going on with my <laughs> what is impending doom approaching. Uh oh. It would seem that I have quite a lot of work to do, so now I think it's time to start grinding through everything that I skipped over earlier. So hit that good terraria music. So to start, I head over to the snow biome and have a battle with the deer claws. My snow biome is also a hallow, so I go ahead and fight the queen slime next. After dispatching of her, I head over to the beach house and do some special fishing until I catch Duke Fisherhawk. With those three bosses out of the way, I head over to the jungle temple and start yoinking all their traps. I clear an area near the house and make this, a sort of replacement for the AFK event arena that I have. 
This one's filled with conveyor belts and traps. But this built I summon the Frost Moon at the Christmas event. The arena takes care of all the base enemies pretty easily, and whenever one of the trees or Santas or Ice Queens show up, I just hop onto this top area and kill them. I then, after that, take on the Pumpkin Moon with all the same rules in place. And now it is time for the preparations. I head over to one of the underground beehives in the jungle and start grabbing a bunch of honey. I then make this small rectangle box above the boss arena with a campfire, a heart lantern, and honey all across the floor for max health regeneration. The next step is to head over to the goblin tinker and start reforging all the accessories I plan on using until they have the warding enchantment for maximum defense. After doing a bit more farming for some accessories, going into the dungeon to fight some paladins for a paladin shield and turning the AFK place into an ice biome to get some ice turtles to spawn for a frozen turtle shell, I take off my Terra Spark boots to equip a celestial shell replace the ninja gear with some celestial cuffs and replace my wings with the frozen shield and also re-equip the worm scarf for that percent damage reduction. This along with the 128 defense, the max health regen, and the consumables I had beforehand, it's time to fight the final boss, the Moon Lord, how the game intended. Honestly, this was basically the whole fight. I did get low a few times, but then I had the wonderful idea that I could just use the magic mirror to teleport back to the nurse and have her heal me to full health. Then I just gotta run up and put myself back in the box and start hitting him again. So it turns out that the final boss was actually the most anticlimactic. This is also where the only problem in the entirety of this game presents itself, as there's nothing to actually do after you beat the moon more. He does drop a few cool things, I guess. I got some cool looking wings, I got a new light pet in the form of a floating eye, and I also got the portal gun, which naturally, the first thing I did with it was this. Portal gun! And then I made the worst mistake in my entire playthrough of the game right at the end. As I grabbed one of the things that I was awarded for defeating the Moon Lord, the Celebration Mark II, and seeing how it didn't have any text that should warrant any concern, I naturally fired it immediately to see what it did. Oh! 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 Oh!